morning America, Europe, all the other countries globally that we are doing business with as dchoker.com and saving lives around the globe. My name is Alan Carver. I'm the inventor of the choker device. Behind me here is our first aid kit, which is the only first aid kit in the world that has a choking device in it. So if you're in a break room, in a corporate facility, a factory, anywhere that they're serving food, kitchens around the world, if someone's choking, you have an opportunity to save their life. You don't have to worry about doing uh, the back slaps and the uh, abdominal thrust. If they fail, if you use them and they fail, then you have the dechoker device there, which uh, will probably work. Nothing's guaranteed, but we honestly feel like here we're a 95% chance. And the reason I say that is because when we've been used, we have not failed and we've already saved 15 lives in the last year in corporate facilities throughout the U.S. Uh, one of our major uh, companies is in 43 states with 40,000 employees. We just picked up another company, a large facility that deals with Alzheimer's in 13 states in the Midwest. We just picked up a large charity, has 60 chapters. They're in 32 states. So we're spread across there at random around the globe. We're pretty good size in Spain and the UK. We're starting to roll out pretty good in the UK. We're getting in the uh, uh, nursing home facilities there. There's several in the last month over there. We're in Australia now. Uh, we're just doing a deal in Mexico. Uh, there's just um, Norway, Denmark, and I can go on. Anyway, my point is simple. That is, the choking can be handled. You don't have to choke to death because nowadays in a lot of these protocols they don't even try to re remove the obstruction. What they do now is they just get there immediately and they do the CPR and try to keep your chest compressions to keep the blood moving through your brain so they can get you to the hospital. But what we do know is that within about two minutes after choking incident the oxygen pretty much has left your blood. So it's very high risk. Lots of folks have brain damage. It happens in homes throughout America and around the world. There's 150,000 people a year. They're dying from choking this recorded. There's a lot of countries that don't record. That's to say there's thousands of people a month that go to hospitals with choking incidents. We don't know how many of those have brain, uh, brain problems. What we have, the reason the choker's not already throughout most of the world is because we have what we call protocols. And these protocols, there's never been a BLM, a BLS, I'm sorry, for these, you know, basic life-saving uh, protocol. So what we have is, uh, you know, abdominal thrust and back slaps. That's it. So now that we have a life-saving device and they're being used and uh, they're a manual suction device, I mean, they're just absolutely just changing the way things are done. If you're putting this in a third position, if you're following the protocols, the back slaps and abdominal thrust. If you use the choker in the third position, your chances of saving that person is 95%, whereas before it was about 45 to 60%. And so it's, it's proving itself. There's no reason to choke to death anymore. So anyway, if you look at these products, we have it for a wheelchair, a soft pack, because uh, the wheelchair community is very vulnerable to choking. They have a lot of mucus that builds up because of being paralyzed. They actually have weak diaphragms, and there's you know millions of people that are in wheelchairs. So we're just now starting to get into that community. We've donated into some of those programs now as we're moving forward. We've also teamed up with a litigation firm. And what this firm is doing is not running around trying to sue everybody. What they're trying to do is make public awareness. So they're actually doing meetings and stuff with some of the companies here and letting them know that they are protected by the Samaritan Act. And at the same time, it's like the AED. This one particular company that we're working with is out of West Palm. Uh, they are part, probably partially responsible for the AED market and for getting it out there. He's a national speaker and his, uh, his intentions are great and he's pushing, he's helping drive it. So can you imagine a medical, what kind of medical we would have in this country if it wasn't for litigating attorneys because that balance is there. We, none of us like litigation, but at the same time that litigation is what drives people to do it right and try to keep it protected. On the other hand, it's a very negative because now all of your uh, your risk managers, they just all hesitate to do anything because you have a protocol. Well, some of these companies have stepped out finally on their own and they put in through the risk manager and they put the choker in and they're saving lives. I mean, they're, they're just, we sell them every day to them. They believe in them. They're major corporations. They've been bold. We have spoken to most nursing home facilities throughout the U.S. and very few have put them in yet. So I say to you, if you have a loved one, 
and they're in a nursing home facility. They're very vulnerable to choking of food or whatever because of their age, and it's very hard to do back slaps and compressions on them because they're so fragile. So make sure that if they're in one of these facilities, they have a de choker device. And at the end of the day, as you got a 99 to 95 to 99 percent chance that's going to save that person's life. We couldn't guarantee 100 percent. Sometimes there's issues that would present that. But not to have a choker device there and again upgrade that percentage of saving that life to us is a major mistake. So we ask you to reach out to those communities. These protocols we're working on with the states, these uh, medical directors, about getting them in these daycare facilities, getting them in our public buildings, getting them in our arenas, and getting in all of these places that's out there that where you eat, these uh, restaurant programs, fast food chains. We're working with these people daily. The problem with it is we don't have a protocol because there's never been anything. So we're having to you know, jump through hoops and hump through hoops to get through this thing. With your help, with you asking for that new choker device to be there to protect your loved one, it'll happen quicker. We've been out here over two years, been saving lives. We haven't had any incidents. We don't anticipate we're gonna have any. The choker is just that simple. I've used it on myself over 300 times in demonstrations and I've never had any issue with it. Myself, over 300 times, I've done a full-fledged assault on myself to everything in the world to try to injure myself or see if it could. It's never happened. That's how safe the device is. So I caution you, whatever you do, if they don't have a choker on that premise, ask for it. And if they don't, please ask them to get one because it will make a difference and you can enjoy your loved ones. And if you don't have one at home and you have children and seniors living with you, it's a it's a firestorm not to have one. It is so high risk. Whatever you do, have them in your home, in your pantry for these children that eat grapes and they eat hot dogs and bread and chips and you just name it. Stuff that children choke on or things they pick up off the floor and that make them choke. They're very, very, very prone to choking. So anyway, I say this, uh, look us up at dchoker.com. Anything we can do for you, if you have a loved one, if they have issues, then we'll, we'll be happy to help and uh, accommodate in the best way that we can. Thank you very much for your time.